A rocket engine is core to any space program and has the ability to single-handedly change the capabilities of a launch vehicle. For years now, SpaceX has been consistently working on the Raptor engine in order to increase its power as well as improve the production process. Recently, we learned more about the newest version of this engine, Raptor V3. Information came out regarding impressive test results after SpaceX fired the upgraded engine at the McGregor test stand. This is a big deal, as Raptor is a major part of the Starship program and will be tested once again not too long from now. The more SpaceX can safely increase the power of the Raptor engines, the more Starship will be capable of for any type of mission. In reality, Raptor upgrades have been happening for many years with different improvements being announced every once in a while. Here I'll go more in depth into the new Raptor V3 test information, the timeline of this engine, how this impacts Starship's future, and more. The Raptor engine is a reusable methane oxygen stage combustion engine that powers the Starship system and has twice the thrust of the Falcon 9 Merlin engine. All the way back in 2012, SpaceX publicly announced concept work on a rocket engine that would be several times as powerful as the Merlin 1 series of engines. Since then, they've been constantly working on and testing the engine. Only two days ago, Elon Musk tweeted saying, Raptor V3 just achieved 350 bar chamber pressure or 269 tons of thrust. Congrats to SpaceX propulsion team. Starship Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so total thrust of 8,877 tons or 19.5 million pounds. This included the relative chart showing the timeline and chamber pressure of the engine test. When asked if the test took place at the McGregor test site, Musk responded, Yeah. To be frank, we did not expect the engine to survive a full duration run at that pressure. It is uncharted territory. This new chamber pressure and thrust means Starship, despite it being the biggest rocket in the world, would have a 1.77 thrust-to-weight ratio at liftoff. Those types of numbers are more commonly seen for smaller rockets, not massive ones. In addition to work on the engine performance, SpaceX has also been making impressive progress on the engine production process. Only weeks ago, Musk was quoted saying, We even slowed down Raptor engine production because we've got more Raptors than we know what to do with. This helps put in perspective the amount of work going into this hardware. Early last year, SpaceX held a Starship update that focused a lot on the Raptor engines and different changes that were made. While Raptor V1 produced around 185 tons of thrust, V2 was able to produce around 230 tons. Now in 2023, they were producing 269 tons. In addition, during the update last year, Musk mentioned that he was confident they would get V2 thrust up to 250 tons. During the presentation, they showed a photo of both engines next to each other and even had two Raptor versions side by side in the background. On Raptor V1, you can see a labyrinth of plumbing and parts surrounding the entire engine in a very complex design. Musk mentioned that Raptor V1 looks kind of like a Christmas tree spaghetti pile, while V2 is greatly simplified, while also increasing thrust at the same time. In this side-by-side -side comparison, it becomes very clear the major improvements made. The simplification not only improves the efficiency of the engine, but also helps SpaceX with the cost and time to produce Raptor V2. Elon even pointed out that V2 costs about half as much as V1, even though it's much more powerful. All these changes between V1 and V2 can likely be applied to V2 and 3. While the thrust improvements are great for SpaceX and the Starship program, it's very likely that quite a few other features of the new V3 Raptor have changed as well. The power is important, but so is the reliability, reusability, and production aspects. Not long from now, we can hope to receive more updates on the new engine and exactly what it's capable of. With new information coming out about Raptor V3, it brings up the question of when will this be used on Starship. During the rocket's first test flight, we saw a few different problems with the engines that had an effect on the overall launch. In this case, with the rocket utilizing 33 Raptor engines on the first stage alone, they have to be very reliable and consistent for successful launches to be possible. As for the next launch, the most probable outcome is SpaceX using the Raptor engines already installed on Booster 9. These engines are plenty capable and could still provide great results on the second orbital test flight. Down the line, however, we can expect new engines to be implemented. It's important to point out that while SpaceX just got some incredible test results with the Raptor V3, they are still somewhat early in development and testing. Elon even commented how they didn't expect the engine to survive. It will take quite a bit more testing before they're ready to use these engines on an actual launch. On the bright side, SpaceX has a lot of experience with testing and upgrading the Raptor engine hardware. Initial development testing of Raptor methane engine components was done at NASA's Stennis Space Center where SpaceX added equipment to the existing infrastructure to support liquid methane engine testing. By early 2016, SpaceX had constructed a new engine test stand at the McGregor test site in Central Texas for Raptor testing. In 2021, SpaceX announced that they would be building a second production facility for Raptor engines. 
this one in South Texas near the existing rocket engine test facility. At the time, it was reported that SpaceX would break ground soon and that the facility would concentrate on the serial production of Raptor 2, while the California facility would produce Raptor vacuum and new slash experimental Raptor designs. The facility is expected to eventually produce 800 to 1,000 rocket engines each year. SpaceX aims at a lifetime of 1,000 flights for Raptor. In 2019, the marginal cost of the engine was stated to be approaching $1 million. SpaceX plans to produce up to 500 Raptor engines per year, each costing less than $250,000. Moving on to late 2021, SpaceX said that scaling Raptor production to support the frequent Starship test program planned for 2022 was currently the biggest constraint on how many vehicles they could make and that failing to achieve a flight rate of at least once every two weeks by late 2022 would open up the possibility of bankruptcy for SpaceX. The reason given was that Starship orbital launch capability is necessary to deliver the next generation Starlink satellites, needed to operationalize the massively capital-intensive Starlink broadband internet constellation. Not only are these new Raptor engines crucial for the first stage of Starship, but also the upper stage. The Starship upper stage features three sea level and three vacuum-optimized Raptor engines. Raptor Vacuum, or RVAC, is a similar design to the Raptor engine, but features a larger exhaust section and a larger expansion nozzle to maximize the engine's efficiency in space. Specifically, Raptor Vacuum is a variant of Raptor with an extended, region-cooled nozzle for higher specific impulse in the vacuum of space. In terms of design, the Raptor engine is powered by subcooled liquid methane and subcooled liquid oxygen in a full-flow stage combustion cycle. This is a departure from the simpler, open-cycle gas generator system and lock slash kerosene propellants that the current Merlin engines use. Also, the RS-25 engines, which were first used on the space shuttle, use a simpler form of a staged combustion cycle, as do several Russian rocket engines, including the RD-180 and the RD-191. The Raptor engine is designed for the use of deep cryogenic propellants, fluids cooled to near their freezing points, rather than using the cryopropellants at their boiling points as it's more typical for cryogenic rocket engines. The use of subcooled propellants increases propellant density to allow more propellant mass to be stored within the vehicle's tanks. Engine performance is also increased with subcooled propellants. Specific impulse is increased, and the risk of cavitation at inputs to the turbo pumps is reduced due to the higher propellant fuel mass flow rate, all of which important factors in this new engine's performance and future. SpaceX just revealed new details on the Raptor 3 engine. After a lot of work and testing on Raptor 2, New improvements and more thrust is already available. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.